Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you joining this webinar. I am so excited again to be here. I, this is a great privilege to share so many insights with all of you who attend these webinars. Today I am super privileged to have uh, some super smart guys and friends of SAP here uh, and Bramasol. Um, we're going to talk about what I'll call the glue, the lifeblood, the interconnective tissue that helps keep um, our programs are, are working in terms of the public cloud and cloud solution uh, and the digital solutions economy. So, so I want to introduce Satish Raja Gopal. Satish, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. It is great to have you here. Um, so, Satish is a solution advisor with the business technology platform uh, and an expert on companies and how you can use the business technology platform to um, really drive your business. And then a, a, a friend and just a tremendous expert, and I'm privileged and, and excited to have you here, Ken. Welcome back to uh, Ramasol webinar. Thanks. Great to be back. Looking forward to our discussion today. Absolutely. So with that, I'm going to dive into uh, the agenda. We did our welcome. I'm going to talk a little bit about the foundation. Uh, show and talk about data flow models, and then we'll dive right into SAP, uh, BTP, and Event Mesh. And then we'll wrap up with some closing thoughts and questions uh, for you. Reminder, as we go through this, we are recording the session. Um, so anybody, you know, most of you are muted. Um, you know, we'll try and we'll continue to open it up as you have questions. Raise your hands if you have questions. Uh, and so we'll record the session. Ask questions throughout. We do have a chat window. We have a questions capability, uh, so you can do that. And as I mentioned, uh, we have other webinars. Uh, so go check out our other webinars, webcasts, podcasts, content available uh, through our different playlists on YouTube. And we've arranged it uh, very easily for you to go in and find content on the specific subject uh, you're working on and looking for. As I said, you can contact us, so check us out at bramasol.com. Engage with us on Facebook, Apple iTunes, YouTube, uh, with all our videos, and then LinkedIn. Uh, we've been posting a lot of content up there and information for you. Uh, check it out, like it, share it. We ask that you uh, engage with that content. Uh, really share it with your colleagues, comment on it if you like it. Uh, so that's um, kind of where we're so to create some context and, and Satish, maybe you can go on mute. We're getting a little echo until you're ready to chat. Let me do that. Perfect. So why are we here and why are we talking about RevRec Reimagine? Well, the real reality of the world is so many different companies are moving to um, the digital solutions economy, these new business models. And I know, Ken, you and I see this all the time in terms of our engagement with different customers. They want to either move to a subscription model, they have a subscription model and want to create more dynamic pricing models, they're moving to outcome-based usage and consumption. So we spend a lot of time talking about all of that activity and there are all kinds of different companies that are available and, and working in different spaces. We can see many of the ones we've worked with, talked with, who are really changing the way we do business uh, in this economy and think of some that are more traditional um, in the high tech space like NVIDIA who is really moving forward a leader in um, graphics technology but think of them as not just a graphics technology company but a graphics technology platform and company that engages on a different level. Uh, many of these companies are driving those kinds of uh, models. We believe that that creates this idea of the digital solutions economy. And we've worked a lot with folks like Ken <coughs> and others on creating this thought process around <clears throat> really how do customers engage? How do your, how does your business help your customers engage, <coughs> excuse me, everybody, in this circle, whether it's from commerce and engagement through quoting, order management, supply chain and logistics. But all of that really drives an interactive customer experience. But how do you connect all of the dots? How do you engage all of that? How do you make sure that you are focused on the things that matter? Three ways that SAP helps you do that. 
Number one is through Rise, engaging on your hyperscaler platform, allowing you as a business not to have to focus on the platform and managing the platform, but rather helping you really focus on this total customer experience, focus on the elements in this circle that allow you to manage your business and focus on what matters. We also have data mediation. All of these information, all of this information comes together either from a single platform like SAP, but more often we find <clears throat> through various platforms in SAP or in non-SAP solutions, and you need a way to manage uh, and clearly deal with that data. And finally, what brings it all together? What's the glue? What's the connective tissue? <clears throat> How do you engage with all of this? And that's where we're going to talk today about the SAP business technology platform and a tool called Event Mesh. And this is particularly true uh, in the cloud space. I'll tee up and then I'm going to ask Satish and Ken to comment on this slide momentarily. Um, we'll talk about there are various ways that you can focus on integrations. Um, we've talked about APIs and you'll hear more about that, kind of synchronous ways or ways that you can engage in that content. The power of SAP is brought through their native integration and native connectivity through the core. <clears throat> Solutions like SAP, BRIM, RAR, and others that sit and connect in the SAP core. And then finally, mediation and other tools. And we're going to learn about some of the other tools that are available. So, um, Satish, Ken, are you out there? We are here. You are there. Yeah, so, go ahead. Talk about, yeah. So, from the you know from the quote to cash perspective, we see this as being a combination of capabilities or tools in the tool bag, and that's because of the fact that. We believe that quote to cash is part of a larger landscape. If you think about things like usage processing, for example, you really aren't sure of what any one particular customer is going to have as their methodology. Is it a push or is it a pull to get that data towards pricing and rating? Is it something that's being brought in as individual transactions as they occur or is it happening in batch? And so you need potentially multiple tools. And that's why having things like BTP and its uh, cloud platform integration layer, as well as you know, things like uh, mediation, really allow us to handle both the scalability requirements and the flexibility requirements for communicating with that outside world from an order to cash perspective. So Tish, I don't know if you had any other thoughts there. Yeah, absolutely, Ken, great point. You know, those days of single vendor, one system, one application days are over, right? It's about digital, transformations, customers, vendors, uh, you know, having multiple vendors and how to put together all that make us, you know, uh, uh, a seamless uh, platform and application experience for the end users. So that we will talk about that today briefly, how the solutions that we're going to talk about helps bringing stuff together. All right. So before we dive in and Ken, um... We'll start transitioning to, to you in a moment as a presenter, but I'd like to run a, a couple of polls here just to gauge the audience's familiarity. So let's start with poll number one. Um, here we go, we're gonna launch that poll. Then the first one says, how familiar are you with SAP BTP or the business technology platform? Why don't you go ahead and answer that question? All right, we've got 34%. I think we can get to 50%, guys. Let's keep going. Guys and gals, I saw, I'm sorry. Look at that, we're over 50%, fantastic. And it looks like people. we'll have some good conversation today. It, it seems to so. be the need for some uh, familiarity amongst a good portion yeah. of the audience. All right. I'm going to close the poll in a moment. So anybody else get one or two more people. Come on, you can do it. We're at 70% That sounds like statistically significant. So I'm going to close that poll. So Ken, it looks like, and to share with the audience, about 50% are passing familiarity. 
Um, some people have strong familiarity with the BTP platform uh, and others, not so much. So as you said, I think it'll be good. Yeah, mix. I really feel good about it. And looks like we have the right info for you, the takeaway for you after the, the 60 minutes. Uh, I'm sure you'll find something useful to take away, everyone. Thank you. All right. Let's and go the, the second I one. Uh, I have one more poll. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry, we're gonna launch the next poll. One more quick poll for everybody. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, so our next poll is, how familiar are you with, if you know what BTP is, what do you know about Event Mesh? So again, very much, not so much, not at all. And I suspect this one will be a little bit different, Ken and Satish. All right. All right, we got 50%. Let's give it a couple of more folks who can vote. Even USAP people can vote, I promise. Right, we won't know who you are, so if you don't know what event mesh is from SAP, that's okay. All right, we have about two, three quarters of people voting. Uh, so um, absolutely, I think, Ken, as we uh, discussed, and I'll share those results uh, with the audience, um, very different perspective. Um, yeah, not, hopefully they came to the right place, right? And not at all. So the good news is, I think this is a great opportunity here for everybody to learn about um, what's it all about. So with that in mind, Ken, I am going to pass the baton to you. I will make you presenter, sir. Thank you. And you should be able to share your screen. There you go. I can see quote to cache architecture discussions. All right, so wonderful. Yeah, when we're thinking about quote to cache uh, overall, what we're finding out with our conversations and with our customers is that really we're moving outside the box. We typically think of you know order and billing as something that's an entity unto itself and needs to have that end to end communication, very tight communication for all of the elements of a solution. And absolutely, SAP helps to bring that to the table. But what's been changing over the past year or so is that there's much more of a focus on the contractual relationships themselves and wanting tighter bi-directional integration with the rest of the environment. And you think about things like other uh, customer management tools, CRM tools, or things on the back end with regard to provisioning, right? Or how I tie in to give feedback to the customers themselves about consumption models. That idea that we're creating these contracts, these ongoing relationships with customers that go through a cycle of creation, update, renewal, right? Uh, cancellation in some unfortunate cases. And we need to have that information transmitted out beyond the boundaries of what the order to cash solution is, is really the change. What this means though, is that historically, billing systems were all ears and no mouth. They, they really didn't have any way to cohesively talk in a standardized methodology to the outside world. And tools like Event Mesh are putting us on a path to really open that up with this idea of publish and subscribe for these type of events. We wanna provide that single point to be able to broadcast events that are happening within the order to cash platform to potentially any number of endpoints so that there can be follow on actions, whether it's notifying a salesperson or sending an email to the customer themselves or providing notification to some type of provisioning system downstream. And in fact, this charge has been led by SAP's public cloud environment because we've got this idea already of multiple tenants talking to each other. And so now we actually have things like Event Mesh as a required component to do quote to cash in that public cloud environment. We'll talk about that use case as we go forward. We're really using this Event Mesh broker, if you will, and you're going to learn about it in a few sections, to help provide a driving interaction 
for the events that can lead to upsell, cross-sell, and retention type of conversations. Well, let's let's talk about some use cases. Uh, the the one that I think has gotten most attention, and again, this came out of the public cloud environment first with our subscription billing product, was the idea of contract renewal. We always talk about the fact that you know in a recurring conversation, recurring revenue conversation with customers, there has to be a good reason for renewal, and one is that it's you know, contractually defined by a regulatory environment or by your customers themselves, or because your sales team wants to take advantage of an opportunity to talk to the customer about that product or service that they're providing under that contractual relationship to be either able to do upsell or cross-sell, but perhaps also to recognize that there are issues and work on retention. So a renewal becomes that process. It's not required. Of course, there's plenty of uh, times when you might have that idea of an evergreen contract. Think of all the things that are currently billing month to month on your um, credit cards right now. And I guarantee you many of them probably have outlived their usefulness, but continue to be billed. That idea of an evergreen is something that's supported, but especially in the B2B space, that idea of renewals are mm -hmm. key. So, you know, how do we take the idea that the system should be able to, in advance of a contract expiration, generate an event out, let's say 90 days in advance, and create a lead in the CRM system, whether it's SAP or not, to generate that lead and have the salesperson begin working on their renewal conversation with the customer. Maybe it's even at the same time sending an email to the customer, letting them know that the salesperson will be reaching out to discuss the renewal process. One of the other use cases that we've seen quite a bit is the notion of replenishment. As everything as a service has taken off, the concept of what goes into that service has expanded. And so now it's not just necessarily providing a piece of equipment to the customer and charging for it as a recurring subscription fee or a recurring contract, but there's also that consumables, whether it be in the case of a washer, it might be soap. If it's in the case of a printer, it might be toner or paper or ink. That idea that we want to have notification based upon consumption or based upon time to drive the system to replenish that customer. And so we wanna use this type of framework to say, how do I have time-based uh, triggers that say every 30 or 60 or 90 days, I'm going to send you out you know, some replacement soap. Or in the case where I actually have IoT devices out in the field that are reporting back their consumption, even if I'm not using that consumption as part of the monetization model, I can still be using it to say, I know how many loads of watch or, or how many pages printed before I need to send you replacement consumables for those products. So supporting both time and usage-based triggers tied into that replenishment order infrastructure is something we both demo for our customers and have customers uh, implementing and using today. Yeah, and Ken, you know, that's one great one. And think people, those are easy examples, but think about the transportation industry where rail or ship or um, truck, where they have regulations about how often you have to maintain, update the cars, the engines, the tracks, all of that becomes a very interesting um, opportunity there too and it, it expands the thinking right oh absolutely when we think about how event mesh is part of a holistic approach for all of erp certainly because i wanted to be careful of sticking to my quote to cash topics today but you're bringing up great ones around service management you know how do i start to use this data in a service management framework to do similar functionality and so event mesh is not just quote to cash based it's tied in with a wide variety of events across the SAP framework. Service management would be another one that would tie in there. Yep. Uh, the, the third use case there is around provisioning, similar to what you're talking about. You know, when I'm creating a new relationship with a customer, 
I probably don't want to start off my billing immediately if I still need to ship a piece of equipment to them and it needs to be installed before they can start using the service. And so I might create that contract day one in a pending state and use that event to trigger the downstream shipment or trigger the service call to go do the installation or trigger the automated provisioning on the network of a piece of software or a license key. And so we see this same type of how does the creation of the contract for the start of the relationship trigger those downstream events to take place. And of course, the feedback loop is saying that as those events are completed, then I want to be able to automatically move my contract from pending into active and start the billing process. And of course, prepaid services are another offshoot of this idea of provisioning because as a customer then uses up the prepaid balance, we want to be able to do notifications for when they should re-up their prepaid amount as they're approaching that exhaustion, or even that they might have had an expiration date for what was provided to them. And of course, you know, if they do run out, we wanna make sure that that triggers downstream provisioning so they know that that service gets cut off and we don't have any revenue leakage there. So those are just three quick examples of the types of use cases that our customers are talking about and implementing with us today. And yeah. we're looking for a more standardized method to uh, approach. Yeah, and absolutely, as you transition, as I think of that that last model you talked about, that'll be a great opportunity we should, you know, around how are you managing entitlements too, right? Because you wanna be able to, to look at those in the quote to cash space and connecting all of those engines, this is a great tool for that. Yeah, and we might have a different topic set up to where we can talk about how event mesh fits into this architecture as well. Not event mesh, sorry, entitlement management. So we can have entitlement models to track the different P's and Q's of what the customer has rights to and how that also fits into the event mesh framework. So uh, uh -huh. that, that's probably a follow on from this, John. Yep. You know, when we were talking about how this is now a mandatory part of the public cloud environment, so I just wanted to highlight that as well. If you think about subscription billing, our public cloud tenant for providing the management of the contract, the pricing and rating, and the generation of billing data that can be used for invoicing in a downstream ERP system. When we think about the fact that the revenue is actually invoiced and the payment collected in ERP, but the contract is generated in the subscription billing tenant, there's a little bit of a disconnect there, right? How do I make sure that the back end has everything it needs to know about that contract every time it's generated in subscription billing so that it can properly recognize the revenue? So having that version of the contract data in your back end is key towards revenue recognition, whether it's event-based revenue recognition in the public cloud, or uh, contract-based revenue recognition if we're using an FICA-based deployment. What, it, what we use Event Mesh for then is an out-of-the-box integration that says every time a contract is created in subscription billing, Event Mesh gets that detail, uses the CPI layer or cloud platform integration layer of the BTP stack and its capability for generating these iFlow scripts to create or replicate that data into the provider contract object of let's say the S4 public cloud backend so that it can be used for revenue recognition. So that's just one particular example where you know we're actually making it a mandatory part of these environments as we go forward because we see the value just in linking up the various different tenants that make up the end-to-end -end quote to cash solution. John, I don't know if you had any other commentary there because you know RevRec is your uh, your bread and butter at the end of the that's day. That's our right? bread and butter. And that's how we create, you know, as you and I have talked, our unique perspective. And I absolutely can. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's it's so important that you have a clear, seamless, and reliable way to transmit the information uh, for all of these events, whether they are uh, single events, uh, setting up the contract itself, or the ongoing recognition. And Event Mesh provides that and allows you to have the, the two-way dialogue uh, for sure. So absolutely, I think it's something that people don't always think about. You know, we always, you and I always joke about it from the perspective of a lot of people talk about quote or lead to cash. They spend a lot of time on the quote and lead side, but not a lot on the to cash and rev rec. And that's something that 
um, you know, really needs to be thought of in advance. Absolutely. So there's a quick question on here. The framework, it's available for uh, just private, public cloud, private cloud. We're going to talk a little bit about that, I think. Yeah, it's available for both. And, you know, we're going to talk about the events that are available in both. So hang on to your hat. Event Mesh is part of the BTP stack, which touches both worlds, both private cloud implementations as well as public cloud. So no, no worries. We're going to definitely dr drill into that. And in fact, why don't we get started right now? Satish, if you open up your microphone, let's let's learn a little bit about Event Mesh, what it is and what it brings to the table, as well as how it fits into the overall uh, business technology platform stack. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And uh, John, thank you. It's, it's been a great, great uh, time together exercise. This is my first time, first webinar with Bremersol, but you guys are pro and a great partner. Thank you. And I only expect that to get better and bigger in coming days and weeks. So thank you one more time for that. And if you if you remember so far, like you've seen how many times at most I should have added one more poll question, uh, like how many times you saw the keywords, notification triggers, when Ken talked about the the you know, core uh, code to cash um, processes, right? So that's exactly is what this event mesh is part of the digital uh, economy, digital transformation experience. But before we get there, I would like to keep three things in, in, in as a takeaway for you, right? I would like to set the stage. One, event mesh, right? We will talk about what is that. This event mesh is part of something called Cloud Platform Integration Suite, CPIS, right? That's the official name of the solution, which indeed is part of the SAP business technology platform, right? I hope you you can see the, the hierarchy, the relationship. That is important because to the question that's just been asked, then you will know the move, you know, various parts of it, how they work together. The first yeah, thing first... What we're, what we're seeing is APIs versus events right now. Yes. So, so, so many jump ahead to that, that stack slide just so you can uh, reference that. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Just wanted to set the stage. So we are kind of going from what is event mesh to the integration suite of the BTP. That's why I said setting the stage. And and first thing is the difference between APIs and events, right? I'm, I'm sure, you know, some of you, if not all of you on this call, uh, I've done some sort of API stuff or doing some API stuff. The API is something that on demand, right? You You have to trigger every time to make it active, need to be called. Whereas the event mesh is that you just like, as John said, Ken mentioned it a couple of times, right? Pub and sub, right? Publish and subscribe. And then not only that, they are asynchronous and non-blocking. You Once you register, you get the feed, you get the notifications, you get the trigger every time when there is a change in the sales order, when there is a change in the you know invoice, whatever it is, it allows us to capture the changes and then whoever is interested and the interested parties can consume that information almost on the fly. Ken, if you can move to the next slide, please. And and three things I want you to you know, understand in this slide. You know, when, whenever we talk about event mesh, there's something called events. There are two types of events. So I'll talk about that in the next slide in a moment. The type of events I want you to immediately try to underscore and understand whenever you get any requirements. And then the event broker, I'll explain in a moment, like what is that has to do with these event-driven architecture and then event consumers, okay? Uh, there are two types of events, notification events and data events. I'll, I'll we'll look at that in a moment. The event broker is like a machine, right? It's like a machine that 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 helps to crawl back you see the diagram there on the right hand side. You have the leaf and you have another insect. Where, where should I crawl to? Where do I get the information, right? That exactly is was done orchestrated by event broker. And how many event broker that you want to install is all will create the mesh, okay? Multiple event brokers forms the mesh and then captures the info and notifies and pass the information, whether it is notification or data even to the you know, interested parties. And then consumers are one 
who consumes. It could be an individual, it could be an application. And and and, and John mentioned about truck maintenance. Think about you know air travel, right? If there is a flight delay, time change or something, you know, you immediately get those. If you are a frequent flyer, if you have an app in your phone, you get the notifications. These are all events. And they use some sort of eventing technology uh, to trigger that. Ken, if you can move to the next slide. A real quick citation in my yeah. normal language. I'm gonna I'm not the you guys are the tech experts, right? But my thought process is if you think of it as there's an a, something that's generating an event, a thing, right? And the broker is simply the one is the the mechanism by which you're ensuring that that event or that item gets handed out to the right people, the consumers of those events. So it's, as you said, it's a broker, it's a, a distribution system, it's a, a way to take these events that happen, understand who needs to be aware of them and how, and then making sure that those consumers receive that information. And each one has an individual type of event, but all of it forms this bigger mesh, as you called it, or I don't like spider web, but a mesh or or system that allows you to get that information. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. You know, there, there are events everywhere. I mean, daily life and whatever you see, you look over the window today, I am looking at my, my yard and someone is yeah, mowing the lawn. That's an event, maybe he's out of gas, right? So that's an event. So the mm -hmm. thing is that, I see a couple of customers' names there and the participants, like you, they're all, they are multinationals. Imagine they have Asia Pacific operations, John, and they have North America. You right. place the brokers in these two respective regions connecting to the core systems, right? These brokers capture those even events, notifications and data, and then passing them, keeping them ready in the way, the format that these applications need ready, pass them. It all happens on the fly. No intervention, right. nothing. Imagine that. It's all digital. Right. There's a interesting and exactly question. what Ken yeah. was alluding to, our core to cash. These are all digital economy things. And imagine exactly. there is a there is a solution called event mesh that can do all these automate this, orchestrate this in the form of brokers and uh, uh, right. uh, events. Yeah. And then the question in the in the in the poll in the questions here, they talk, they ask about how and where are we getting customer interactions, case tickets, et cetera into renewal retention prediction, um, renewals of contracts. And again, my vision would be, it's an event broker as part of your larger mesh that says, oh, I see this event that's happening, there's a case ticket. That information needs to be routed to two different places. I need to send it to um, ServiceNow or whatever tool you're using to help you manage some of that service. But oh, by the way, I also need to route it to my sales organization so that they're aware and they can do sales activity, whether it's retention or others. So it's a flexible engine that way, right? Absolutely. You 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 articulated it so well to the question. That's exactly what the bottom animation is talking about. Renewal is a good example, John. I mean, John, any day, any day. A uh, sales team has to be triggered, right? Notified, and there has to be some backend paperwork has to happen for the renewal. It, imagine it all happens. There is one broker, one system, market streets, all this notifies everybody, and individuals and applications can be receiving those notifications. That's exactly what we are talking about. As you can see in the bottom of the screen, event is getting generated in the business object on the backend. How that can be transmitted right as Ken mentioned about in one of the slides if you remember the CPI I flows if those have the workflow you can make to trigger if there whenever there is a there is a timestamp something that can trigger or John said there is a workflow step that is required for the renewal or the invoice being pending for more than three months or whatever right that can be consumed immediately by the extension when we say BTP extension that could be an application that built by one of the architects who are on the call today and or it could be an optional api call the point is that you now have uh, you know the mechanism to consume all this in two ways that exactly is the next slide if we can move to the next slide can yeah, as we're going satish i want to point out for our quote to cash customers that have invested in mediation they should be aware that mediation has a pre-built listener for event mesh as well. So where you see BTP on this slide on the back end, you could also be using mediation in the same way where it's listening for those events 
and then it's kicking off a thread within mediation to maybe drive uh, replenishment or drive a connection to salesforce.com to generate that lead because I know that they also have uh, linkages there. So there's some nice overlap between mediation and BTP in the architectural framework we're discussing here. Good point, Ken. That's there, in fact, in the two slides from now. I'll talk about that um, briefly after these two slides. This is exactly what I mentioned at the beginning. You just saw what Event Mesh can do, and this is now part of the SAP integration suite. Okay, There are two types of Event Mesh, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Okay, The one you see here is the integration suite, which includes the standard Event Mesh. That's what Ken just talked about, yeah, which which supports basic pops up if the event size is small, and you don't have like millions and billions of uh, events to be tracked and and processed. This event mesh uh, will exactly do that. But if it is beyond these metrics in terms of the size of the event, in terms of the number of you know uh, uh, transactions, uh, notifications in a given hour, given day. Then we also recently have introduced advanced event mesh. Bottom line is keep this diagram in mind. This is a very important one. The SAP uh, Cloud Platform Integration Suite, CPIS, is where the event mesh is part of it. Of course, Integration Suite is a market leader. As you can see, you have like 3,000 plus pre built integration scenarios. I say that for a reason because, to Ken's example, the iFlows that you Put code to cash at anything that comes through this integration suite is natively blended. Okay, you don't have to do anything additional in terms of steps of configurations. That is why SAP integration suite is a market leader. If you can go to the next slide, Ken. And now you saw Event Mesh, and you looked at the integration suite. These two are part of this, you know, the technological foundational platform that we introduced two, two years ago called business technology platform. Okay, to begin with, this can be deployed in any of the hyperscaler multi-cloud strategy. Okay, there was a question about private and public. Of course, the capabilities differ from one versus other. We can take it offline. We can discuss that further in the Q&A part of it. But the bottom line is you have the flexibility to deploy the any hyperscaler private option that you can think of. The next one is go to the top, like the ecosystem solutions and the core functionalities, and and Brim is one of them, right? That you can see in the top of the of the core use cases coming from the SAP modules. Now, as I mentioned, it's a it's a it's a technological foundation. It has about close to 90 plus services, and integration suite is one of them, and even mesh is part of the integration suite. And there are five major pillars that we categorize to include all these 90 plus services, right? But to begin with application development, there are a bunch of services. Automation, you know, if you want to do process automation, that's one, one category of services available there in business technology platform. Of course, integration is the market leader, main service used in business technology platform, very matured. And then the fourth one is data and analytics. All the you know, data and analytics solutions from SAP are all now going to be part of except one service, uh, which will all also be part of BTP. Commercially speaking, I'm telling you that is, but technically if you are going to architect BTP, the goal is today I'm telling you that the SAP's vision is to bring everything into BTP. That's why I'm spending two minutes on this because the more you know about BTP, the better you will be, you know, if you use SAP technologies because all the innovations, most of the innovations, investments that SAP is going to do is around business technology platform. And then the last one, but definitely not the least one, the generative AI, the more those modern new emerging technologies are also part of the business technology platform. And that is why it is very, very important for you to know Connect the dots, right? To John's introduction to Ken's business cases he talked about, imagine business technology being in the behind the scene, right? As a backend, as an infrastructure, as a service, platform as a service, providing you, enabling you all these 
capabilities to facilitate that orchestration. Okay, two more slides. If we can go to the next one, Ken. And this is exactly what Ken said about the mediation, right? Do you see on the left side those digital core publishers publishing, generating, and, and, and events and, and all that? And then on the right hand side, you have you know, uh, the consumers, the, the, the people who receive and make use of those critical information. In the middle, you see the cloud platform and how that facilitates using asynchronous, non blocking, and the communication protocols that are supported, libraries. That's why I mentioned about the native. Uh, uh, you know, drivers and uh, pre built connectors that I talked about. Again, I can't imagine of a scenario in Brim um, universe that is not supported by, uh, you know, the technologies of, that you are hearing today in this call. Okay. Absolutely, uh, you know, a backbone to the, the digital economy use cases. And once last slide, Ken, if you can move to the next one, is where. Uh, I would like to spend a minute on the two flavors or two editions that I talked about, you know, uh, fully managed services that I want you to differentiate and properly architect and position. Both of them can play a significant role in code to cash and brim use cases. One of them is like if you have a small, low entry barrier kind of, you want to put together an event driven architecture then you can go for event mesh. And another thing is that the main thing is the, the applications, the native event broker, small, and you want to orchestrate within the you know, SAP and non-SAP application uh, hemisphere, then absolutely SAP event mesh is more than enough. But at the same time, you want to go for in the pub sub scenario, event driven architecture, you want to go, let's say custom events. You not only want to uh, publish and consume, but also I want to monitor, or I want to put some additional, um, uh, you know, capabilities. I want to expand them into uh, a, a mesh, as I mentioned. Like you know, you are a multinational uh, company having projects and developers and consumers all over the world. You want to put four brokers, for example, in four parts of the world. And you want all these brokers talk to the systems in North America, data center in, you know, Southeast Asia, Europe. Uh, imagine that you have a mesh that orchestrates reads, communicates with each other. That for that you need advanced event mesh. Okay, again, looking at the scale, size of your use case, what exactly you want to do, the patterns, the frequency, the volume, everything determines whether you need SAP event mesh, advanced event mesh, or both. They can complement each other. Okay, yeah. They are part of the SAP cloud platform integration suite, which is part of the SAP business technology platform. What I'm trying to share with you is look at the use case, look at the requirements, how big your you know, BRIM use case is. You can accordingly uh, plug in either event mesh, advanced event mesh, or both of them. So with that, Ken, back to you. I'll monitor the questions and chat if there are any uh, questions for me, or you can unmute at the end of the session and let us know, let me know if you have any questions. Ken, back to you. Yeah, thanks. I, I just wanted to tie this back into quote to cash, because obviously that's what I'm all about. And as you heard me talk about, you know, the, the system, landscape that was really leading this charge is our public cloud that's where all the latest and greatest you know stuff is is being developed nowadays and subscription billing was first and foremost on there so i wanted to point out for those of you starting to think about use cases if you're in the public cloud then we're looking at basically four main types of events that are currently available uh, they are allowance events so think about your prepaid where you've got an amount that can have a balance that can be used up as well as an expiration date and you need events around where that stands as well as uh, billing events. Those tie into both billing and billing forecasting uh, events so that they can be used with the back end from in, uh, invoicing. And of course the subscription events themselves. So if we take it a level down, here's what we're actually talking about. Now the differentiation at the moment between what's in the public cloud and what's in the private cloud 
I would say, is where we are talking about things related to notifications, notifications that are tied to future events. So if you think about a contract expiration date, I actually want to be notified sometime in advance of that. So you see under subscription notifications here that within subscription billing, it natively understands, hey, what is the time period that I'm going to generate this in advance of whatever the contract end date is. But you see a wide variety of events that are available here. These are all defined on the API hub for SAP online. You get all the documentation you need about those, as well as in the subscription billing documentation itself. On the BRIM side, uh, we're looking much more around events that are actually taking place as opposed to notifications. So we have events tied to the life cycle of subscription orders, as well as subscription contracts. And you think about the creation or the update or the deletion. There is also uh, events that are created as part of situation handling. So in the contract renewal specific case, there is a situation handling in S4 for the contract expiration to be generated in advance. And of course, that can flow through and generate a business event on event mesh that then can tie back to that situ situation handling event. So that's how that renewal use case can be done both in BRIM as well as uh, the public cloud subscription billing. In addition to that, we also see a series of events tied to the provider contract in the back end from a contract accounting perspective, uh, contract accounting events and document events as well, and even things tied to installment plans. So there are events that have been created for both the contract side of the house as well as the billing side of the house uh, for BRIM, and of course things much more on the contract side because in the subscription billing world, the billing events would all be taking place in the S4 environment, whether you're using sales billing or whether you're using FICA. So let's let's try and wrap this up as far as what our goals were for today. First of all, it was to make you familiar with the fact that event mesh is something that we are seeing being evaluated more and more as part of customer environments for quote to cash. And as part of that, there's a couple of key reasons why. One is that we want to enable that support of real-time bi-directional integrations, giving your order to cash platform both a mouth and a set of ears. So it's already listening. Now it can more uh, engagingly speak to the rest of your architecture. We want to take advantage of the fact that we're providing lifecycle management from orders and contracts. We want to be able to leverage that information for being able to drive upsell replenishment and retention models to be driven out of that. And of course, we also want to be able to deliver contract data to downstream systems. You heard me already talk about revenue recognition in the public cloud world. It's also used, by the way, for mar margin analysis out of the box in, in the public cloud world. But you can imagine that that contract data might be useful to be sent to other entities beyond the SAP borders. And so, you know, these are the three things that we hope you go away thinking about with regards to quote to cash. And we look forward to having conversations, you know, with our customers and prospects about how we can expand, you know, the quote to cash environments they already have, or perhaps get them into a mind for how they can transform their environments to take advantage of what SAP brings to the table for quote to cash. So that's what I had planned for today. John, I'll turn it back to you and see if we have questions to answer. Sure, we do have another question on the line here about um, volume and velocity of events. And I think um, it's a very interesting question from Navneet. Um, you know, one of the, the concepts, Ken, that you, you might be familiar with since Satish, we didn't get to touch on this before, but you kind of hinted at it. A framework that we use often with our clients in talking about what's the best fit for what you're doing um, in terms of whether it's revenue recognition, BRIM, um, we'll call it quote to cash, right? Because BRIM is, is a, a narrowing term, quote to cash, lead to cash. Uh, and now this is, we say volume, velocity, density, and complexity. And I think that a lot of what we have to think about in terms of this is 
what's the best solution and how do you match it on a volume basis? You know, if you have hundreds of transactions versus millions of transactions on a daily basis, um, how fast, right? I might have millions of transactions, but maybe they only happen once a quarter um, or I'm getting them every day and how quickly do they come? Uh, density meaning, um, you know, those transactions, an event can trigger, you know, I, I could imagine, Ken, a, a situation where a single event or a single notification could trigger 10 or 15 different specific events downstream or notifications. So what's what's that? And then, of course, the interaction yeah. of those in terms of complexity. Yeah, I'll take a swipe on it and then I would like Ken to add from, from general, generic, um, because Navneet mentioned about Telco and, and Navneet, just to tell you two parts. One, the way BTP has been architected is to scale, you know, efficiently, right? Um, so I'm not aware of any limitations in terms of, right, the capacity because you can, it's about customers buying capacity, right? Metrics and uh, units uh, for, for you to scale. The reason I'm mentioning second part of my answer would be, yeah, finance, banking and financial services, and that's what Ken, I, I would like Ken to add some perspective there. But if you look at, for example, telcos, and there are a number of customers or utilities, right? North American, some big name utility providers are using this. Imagine, you know, they, they are processing millions of millions of transactions, events, almost every day. Okay, and they, they all use this. So um, again, no functional limitations or uh, uh, in terms of volumes and velocity, uh, Navneet. Uh, it's all about how you size architect, how you provision, you know, going to provision your, uh, your landscape. Now, that's why I mentioned carefully, depends upon the types of events, the frequency, volumes, and the scope of an event, right? Everything is an event these days, but, but the scope of the event will help you determine, we can help you determine if it's a standard event mesh or advanced event mesh, but otherwise, or net net, um, you don't have to worry about the the capacity to address the volumes and velocity. Namnit, I hope that's okay from the overall usage and solution capability standpoint. Ken, if you can, if you have anything to specify. Yeah, I was going to say that the respect. first thing that came to mind is on the event mesh side because we're really you know publishing once and all of the subscribers are working in that broker type of environment. It's not necessarily that if you have you know, a thousand people on the wire listening. Well, they're all listening for the same event coming across. So that lends towards the scalability of this publish and subscribe model. Once we get beyond that, because they also talked about generating things downstream, that's where we might have the conversation of what's better to be done in a CPI iFlow type of architecture versus something like mediation. Now, mediation was built in this case you know, originally for the telco environment to handle those kind of scalability requirements. And it also has inherent capabilities for being able to enrich data before the events go downstream. So as part of an implementation, we would look at, hey, who should be subscribed to those events on the back end? What are things that are better handled for BTP? Because we've got, you know, iFlows that are available. I'm thinking about the case where we might tie into something like entitlement management, as opposed to something like mediation, where it's much more of a free flow and built for the high scalability and kind of, um, you know, advanced lookup on the fly for each individual event. So I, I concur with Satish that I'm not overly concerned about the actual volume or density, other than in terms of what is the best tool to be that jumping off point from the broker. The broker is going to deliver you the event, but that's where their job basically ends. And then it becomes the rest of either the integration stack or the other uh, tool that's a subscriber to actually pick that up and act on the event. And that's where we have some options available. Yeah, and that's a great, and I have a, and we have to wrap up. We have one minute left. Ken, Satish, that was fantastic. I mean, I, I learned so much um, in the past couple of weeks talking to you guys about this. Um, I think it's very insightful. I hope the audience got as much out of this uh, as possible. Of course, 
Um, I will follow up with both of you. I think we've not only have we done a great job of, of broadcasting, so I encourage everybody to share this video uh, with your friends, family, anybody else. Um, you know, but also there are so many more topics that we can investigate, and I look forward uh, to either doing more webinars or webcasts, uh, so everybody can look forward to us um, really exploring this topic because I think it really is illustrative of the power of SAP in the cloud. Uh, whether it's private or public and the ability to create a unified platform from which you can make decisions on the best way to move your business forward uh, in the future so uh, ken as always fantastic thank you so much satish great to uh, have this opportunity and i look forward uh, to working with you guys in the future some more absolutely thanks ken thanks john thanks everybody have well, a thanks day. to you both yeah thanks to the audience for uh, participating and Look forward to speaking with great you. Great questions. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Make it a great day.